گلهای رنگارنگ برنامه شماره 264 بی We were sitting with my husband and I explained to him how, you know, everybody in Iran used to listen to the Golha program and it was sort of part of one's life. And um, I couldn't really listen to it very long. Um, I just burst into tears. I found it very, very emotional. Golha program is quite unique. It was the brainchild and an incredible dream of uh, Mr. Davoud Pirnia. At that time, we're talking about the 1950s, by 1956, the level of literacy in Iran was quite low. So this program actually brought the wealth of our literary heritage to everyone who had access to the radio. <laughs> And over 850 hours of these phenomenal orchestral um, compositions, uh, poetry recitations, solo performances were made available. And at the time when we grew up, we were sort of very much inspired by Western music. But the Golha program was so much part of everybody's upbringing. Officially, women are not participating on radio and television programs nowadays. So it is very important that the young generation of Iranians um, know what wonderful musicians and singers, female or male, existed in the 1950s and 60s and 70s. روزها اگر رفت گورو باک نیست تو بمان تو بمان ای آنکه جز تو پاک نیست I am delighted that um, Jane Lewison, with her phenomenal enthusiasm and her incredible love of Persian culture, and particularly literature and music, had this brilliant idea to gather as many of the tapes of Golha program that is possible. The first crucial and difficult steps have been taken by the Iran Heritage Foundation. The Golha program overlaps two phases. The first phase is really having the archive at an academic institutions outside Iran and this is currently at the British Library in London. Phase two, which is far more important, is creating a database which is searchable where the users of the database can do much more than just listen to this amazing uh, series of broadcasts. It will offer bio-bibliographical material, it will have musical notations for the songs, there will be the text of these poems, and this will open the door for not only the wider public, but for the academic institutions. A huge amount of uh, background work goes into you know, doing this. As I said, this is a work in progress. There are hours and hours and hours of audio. Yeah that people have to listen to, to then cue point the various parts within those programs. And then all those cue points have to be described and, and allocated to one of the 18 categories which is in our database and, uh, and then put in, which seems when you just click on that so simple, oh we just click on it, there it goes, bing! But there's an awful lot that goes into it before the, the bing. <laughs> It's as important, as I said, to um, preserve and support intangible heritage as to support the tangible heritage of Iran. And um, th this is really something that if we don't record it and if we don't um, archive it, um, it will disappear. 
So the database will become actually a virtual museum of uh, 20th century uh, performing arts in Iran um, so that it will be accessible to everybody inside and outside of Iran, whether they're just casual um, lovers of Persian music and poetry or whether they're serious students and scholars uh, that want to uh, analyze uh, more deeply the poetry and music of uh, uh, 20th century performance in Iran. Hey, 